vestibul thank you vestibular orienting release vestibular orienting release page number a6 this is recycled from our neck workshop as you see uh, but here we'll give a special attention to the trauma implications of this because that's what we're talking about with hot whiplash the the mechanics of the technique are really simple it's just how you doing there Dana? You're great. great okay lifting the head till I feel a moderate stretch it's not a stretch of the neck but I do start with it lifted and then I lower slowly enough that I can feel and she can feel where she might hang on to the head and I described that those little moments of hanging on or something tightening as mini activations as tiny little moments of autonomic activation where there's a bit of uncertainty or a habitual holding or it could relate to a position that was injured or a place in the neck that's been injured. When I find one of those places where her head seems to get lighter in my hands or she, I can feel her holding on, I just wait there. I just wait for her head to release. And so this could take some time. So it's important that I'm comfortable in my chair, that I'm letting the weight rest on the table as opposed to trying to hold it all up with my muscles. Yeah, my wrists resting on the table under there. The grip, let's see if we can view that. I'm gonna move your head, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna hold comfortable. Whatever grip is comfortable for you. I think I'm even, it was pointed out yesterday, I'm doing it differently in the picture that I'm doing it here. Two-handed grip's possible. Uh, so the grip isn't crucial. It's something comfortable for you so you can take the time to lower it slowly. So it's important that I'm comfortable in my own body too, that I'm able to monitor my own relaxation. Now, if someone's neck has been injured, uh, we're going to be really delicate with moving their head around. And the general rule of thumb that this technique already violates is uh, with a hot whiplash, you use motility, meaning their ability to move, as opposed to mobility, which is your passive movement of them, or their ability to be moved. So movements that you can have them make are generally much safer than movements you make for them. The same principle holds true for other kinds of acute injuries too, or uh, disc, uh, disc injuries too, you know, those kind of, that principle really helps keep you safe. Doing things that involve the client's movement, they're not going to typically push themselves into places that are too painful. And the movement in whiplash, in the case of whiplash, is really useful because it prevents adhesions and keeps the tissue uh, fluid and healthy and also starts to reestablish those reflexes. Back to the technique though, all I'm doing here is just waiting for her head to get heavy again. But again, if the neck was injury, injured, I'd be really careful about the lifting phase. And I'd be in touch with her on the way down about how she's doing, especially for any dizziness or vertigo. How are we doing, Dana? Great. If someone did get dizzy, I'd back off a little bit from that position and just wait for that dizziness to subside. And I, we can even start a signal system that says, go ahead and just Raise your index finger when you feel the dizziness subside there, and we'll just wait. And then so she, it might be four or five breaths, and she lets me know with her finger, and then I go touch more. I might say, raise your finger if it starts up again. And I can feel, I can actually feel someone start to grip a little bit with their head, a tiny bit. So you can do that kind of dialogue with someone too. It's really rich. Questions? Up to inform any later techniques? Or? Yeah, yeah, you could. Although it, it's, it may not be really literal. Mm -hmm. I don't have a chart of if it's this degree of angle, it's this part of the body or something, right? But yeah, that's going to indicate something's happening there that could be interesting to explore in other ways. Yeah. Are there any warning signs? Like, they're supposed to go see a doctor first, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, are there any warning signs? Because I know that they're misdiagnosis too. Like, if, you're, if you have somebody on the table and our doctor said it's okay, right. is there anything we should be looking for to make sure that we're not? Yes. The question is, are there warning signs or things we should watch for, whether or not their doctor says it's okay? Right. There are a list of those things in the back of the book here, and we'll stick that in the video somehow. Briefly, if, if someone gets nauseous, that's not good. If their eyes wiggle, that's not good. Well, I don't know if it's not good or not, but it's, it's a sign to be careful. Uh, or if they vomit, <laughs> stop, stop working on them, you know. <laughs> um, 
the sun. <laughs> uh, those are all, those could be, not necessarily, but those could be uh, signs of nerve, uh, spinal cord compression that could come from a ligament compromise. If the ligaments got sheared off or torn, then the bones could actually push on the, the spinal cord and cause some of those things. It may not mean that too, but those are things to watch out for. And they're listed uh, various places in the notebooks. I took a class, uh, it was really a mild class in orthopedic massage, and he used to have us press down on the top of the head first. And if, if Do a little compression or something? Then you could continue, but if they had any kind of dizziness or weirdness going on, then you weren't able to work on them. Interesting. I haven't heard that test. That's interesting. It's intriguing. Yeah. In general, I'm thinking release, and especially if someone's unstable, I'd be very careful about how I'd push down and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I was so thinking that was with flash. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. So um, often I find it's these um, injuries that are not from I mean, it's kind of iffy whether, you know, so they, they have work flash, but that's, you know, a kind it's of a big, big term. term. It's a big term. And, and often there's no MRIs or there's no um, even x-rays if it's mild. And so it is, so yes. it's kind of such a vague it is. thing. It is a big one. Um, and the MRIs don't come until later if things don't get better. And Great. So it's... It's true. There's lots, there's lots of things going scary. on. We have to keep our eyes open, for sure. Mm -hmm.